So the summer you got in Cambridge, uh, 38, 7 degrees Celsius. Are you ready for this in every town, uh, in every place uh, in England? Uh, <clears throat> the BBC reported some um, uh, scientific studies that say that uh, London will have the feel the same temperatures than Barcelona by year 2050. And uh, I come from Montpellier University and uh, this summer we got 46 degrees Celsius. And Montpellier is very close to Barcelona, so I don't know if you are really ready to this. <laughs> so uh, we really need new tools for climate repair uh, because uh, getting to uh, reaching net zero emissions by year 2050 will not be enough. And as has been already said, uh, it will, uh, we need uh, to remove greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. So I will present you the iron salt aerosol, which is a natural method uh, to remove methane and other greenhouse gases. But first, I would like to thank you all my colleagues. Uh, so I will f uh, f follow this conductive thread in case you don't ex understand really my accent. Uh, <laughs> uh, so why are we moving other greenhouse gases than carbon dioxide? You can see here, it's a very old uh, figure with uh, all the numbers, but you can see here that, of course, carbon dioxide is the most important uh, contributor to global warming. But you can see on the red climate forces that greenhouse gases like methane, allocarbons, nitrous oxides are also very important. And if we look at the same diagram uh, on a shorter period of time, on a 20-year time horizon, you see that all the other greenhouse gases together are uh, the same importance than carbon dioxide, especially methane. So our team is working on greenhouse gas removal. And if I've been invited today, it's because we were among the very first one, ones to propose uh, concrete and realistic methods to remove all the greenhouse gases from the atmosphere at a climatically relevant scale. So here are some of our publications. We have target different uh, greenhouse gases. And uh, the third publication was done in cooperation with some colleagues here present from uh, Birmingham and from Aston University. But today I'm going to present you another method, which is very different from the first, the, the, the previous one, which is the iron salt aerosol, which was done with a German colleague, uh, Franz Oest. Uh, so why targeting methane? Of course, increasing concentrations of met uh, the, 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 met the methane concentration in the atmosphere is increasing because of uh, uh, fugitive emissions from uh, livestock, wetlands, rice paddies, and of, for, from fossil fuels. But uh, as has been told previously by the other speakers, there is a real risk of uh, methane emissions by uh, melting permafrost and by uh, the methane hydrates. And uh, as the global warming potential of methane uh, over a 20 years period is 86 times bigger than uh, carbon dioxide, some scientists think that there is a real methane time bomb. Uh, the, the explanation of this uh, problem is uh, quite easy to understand. You have uh, warming, you have release of methane, which uh, will increase the warming because of his very high global warming potential. And this more warming will increase more uh, methane emissions, which will increase more warming. And that, this is a vicious circle. You will have the same problems with the destabilization of methane hydrates, which are submarine. And uh, in fact, they are stable only if they are around two, three degrees Celsius or even below. And uh, in, um, at a deep of, uh, more than one kilometer. And in fact, the warming ocean surface currents are already destabilizing this methane hydrates. So uh, how can we remove methane? The answer is by enhancing natural things. And um, the principal thing for methane in the troposphere is the hydroxyl radical. And the second one uh, thing in the atmosphere, in the troposphere, uh, which is also natural, is uh, the chlorine atom. 
There are, of course, other smaller methane things. Uh, but what I want to say you is that the, that I will present now, is that the iron salt aerosol can enhance both the natural things, uh, remove hydroxyl, uh, increase the amount of radical, the hydroxyl radical, and increase the amount of chlorine radicals. Uh, so, enhancing the generation of chlorine atoms uh, is the most efficient way to remove methane because the speed of reaction of chlorine atoms with methane <coughs> is 16 times faster than uh, with the hydroxyl radical. So, how can we generate chlorine atoms? There was a K discovery very recently uh, made by uh, German um, researchers and uh, which is that uh, the chlorine atoms are generated by uh, iron tree, uh, which is the state of oxidation of the iron. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, the, the mechanism is very simple. I will not enter into de chemical details tonight, but uh, you have sodium chloride, which is uh, the sea salt you have, uh, the salt you have in your kitchen, or the salt which is uh, the principal constituent of sea salt, with some acidity, which can be natural or which can be uh, man-made, uh, and then with, uh, in contact with iron and sunlight, you will generate chlorine atoms, which will destroy methane. So it's a little bit more complex, but we can talk about this later on. Uh, there is also an interest for the iron salt aerosol method, because uh, as you know, may know, uh, the sea contains also bromine and iodine. And uh, for this, by the same mechanism, we can generate bromine atoms. And uh, bromine are uh, very well known by the scientific community to destroy tropospheric ozone, surface ozone, the, the ozone you find in the cities, not the ozone uh, you find in the stratospheric uh, ozone layer. And uh, tropospheric ozone is a greenhouse gas as you can see on this uh, old diagram from the EPCC. And uh, naturally, in springtime, uh, in the Arctic, and six months later, in the Antarctic, uh, they occur uh, <clears throat> tropos uh, big tropospheric ozone uh, depletions, which cover uh, thousands of square kilometers. And these are due to uh, bromine explosions, and which are natural and occur in the spring. Uh, so, this uh, is some uh, scientific evidence of this, and uh, some uh, scientists have uh, published uh, uh, papers saying that uh, the halogen chemistry, the natural halogen chemistry occurring in the atmosphere, already uh, reduces the radiative forcing of ozone, of tropospheric ozone. Consequently, the iron salts uh, can fight uh, global warming by removing uh, surface ozone. Uh, I will try to convince you that uh, all the method, uh, the iron salt aerosol method, is uh, something natural and already occurring. Uh, there are natural sources of iron salt aerosols, and as has been said previously by Sir David King, uh, iron is a a very important constituent of uh, desert dust is the third most abundant, uh, the fourth most abundant element in the Earth crust, and uh, natural dust always contains iron. So when you have desert storms, you have uh, aerosols containing iron. And uh, as all the gardeners here present know, if your garden is uh, suffering from chlorosis. Uh, if you add iron uh, on the roots or on the leaves, uh, you will fertilize your uh, uh, garden and uh, you have uh, increased yields. Uh, <clears throat> there is a lot of scientific evidence that desert dust fertilizes the Amazon rainforest. Uh, until recently, the scientists thought that the fertilization of the Amazon rainforest was due to the phosphorus content in the desert dust. But now they know that uh, it is on, not only the phosphorus, but also the iron content. As has been already said, 
uh, when uh, desert dust or iron <laughs> falls down in the oceans, they uh, produce uh, large uh, phytoplankton blooms. And uh, <clears throat> this is photosynthesis that, has, that is enhanced. And this also enhances all the marine food web. We have already seen that uh, iron salts, when they fall on the continents, they fertilize the plants. When they fall on the oceans, they fertilize the oceans because there are very large parts of the oceans that are very rich in nutrients like uh, nitrogen or like phosphorus. And uh, they lack uh, iron, so there is no, almost no photosynthesis there. And when you add iron, uh, you have phytoplankton blooms, and this has been proved by uh, 13 uh, ocean iron fertilization scientific experiments. Uh, so, it is well known that the iron of desert dust fertilizes the oceans. Uh, consequently, the iron salt aerosol method can also enhance the, the, oxide, uh, the carbon dioxide uptake uh, by plants and by phytoplankton. Here you have a nice illustration of uh, desert, uh, from Sahara, uh, desert dust from Sahara fertilizing the Caribbean and um, uh, then the Amazon rainforest. But uh, there are also anthropogenic, man-made emissions of iron salt aerosols. And uh, <clears throat> uh, there is um, extensive scientific evidence that uh, open field iron salt aerosol emissions are already occurring due to uh, industrial processes when you burn coal or when you burn fuel, there are iron emissions in the atmosphere. Uh, the steel industry also uh, emits iron in the, into the atmosphere. So currently, iron salt aerosols are also emitted by man-made emissions. Uh, and uh, our purpose with the iron salt aerosol is to expand this inadvertent fertilization into a deliberate uh, climate remediation. So also, the pollution made by combustion processes release in the atmosphere acidic gases like uh, sulfates and uh, uh, nitrous oxides. Uh, and th th these acids will process the iron content of natural desert dust and increase the amount of soluble iron that will fertilize the oceans. Uh, when desert dust uh, leaves the, Amazon, uh, the, the Sahara, there is less than 1% that it, which is soluble. But when uh, it stays four or five days in the atmosphere before reaching uh, the Amazon or the Caribbean, uh, the amount of soluble iron increases. And this increases uh, the, the fertilization effect. Those combustion processes for some scientists uh, with running some climate models on computer uh, have calculated that uh, the fertilization effect of the iron salts aerosol and the emissions of iron salts uh, already contribute to 20 to 100 percent of the soluble iron deposition uh, over the ocean regions. And in contrast to natural desert dust, uh, which is very, uh, occurs very infrequently, the iron emissions from, desert, from fossil fuel power plants and from steel industry uh, are continuous all over the year. As a conclusion, we can say that uh, there is a lot of scientific evidence that already soluble Boy, <laughs> soluble iron uh, from industrial pollution uh, and from fossil fuels enhances already the biological productivity. Uh, and we believe that uh, these, they can be replaced by uh, safe uh, iron salt aerosols that we can generate. Global shipping already also generates iron salt aerosols. Uh, cargo vessels uh, and uh, shipping containers, uh, container ships, uh, burn bunker fuel, which has a contaminant, several contaminants in the bunker fuel, uh, and one of the contaminants is iron. So 
there is iron in the combustion gases uh, on the plumes. And uh, as uh, in over the oceans, there is always uh, natural sea salt as prey when they encounter the iron from these uh, anthropogenic emissions they produce iron salts aerosols which will generate chlorine or bromine atoms which will, which will destroy methane and which will destroy uh, <coughs> uh, tropospheric ozone and some computer models suggest that by the end of the century the deposition of soluble iron due only to shipping uh, will contribute to between 30 and 60 percent of the soluble iron deposition in the northern hemisphere. So one possible way of generating uh, iron salt aerosols and dispersing them is by enhancing the iron emissions by global shipping uh, but with a second purpose, which is to reduce the pollution. In fact, it is known, it's very well known since, since the 1970s and uh, that um, adding metals like iron in fuel additives improves uh, motor performance and reduces pollution, the, the emission of pollutants and reduces the emissions of black carbon. So, uh, these uh, iron fuel additives are already uh, commercially available. They are allowed and they are used. And the publication I showed you before didn't take in, took into account this uh, iron in their calculation. So one possible way of generating uh, uh, iron salts aerosol to remove methane and tropospheric ozone is using uh, an existing infrastructure, which is the shipping industry. A second uh, possible way to uh, produce uh, iron salt aerosols is simply to dissolve them, in, uh, to dissolve sea salt with iron chloride uh, in water and spray it uh, thanks to balloons or something else. So it's a very simple method that, that can be done without the need to develop a complex uh, new methodology or infrastructure. And uh, this uh, iron salt aerosol dispersion method uh, allows us to target very concentrated and localized emission sources of methane before they, the methane is released and mixed with the atmosphere and is diluted in the global atmosphere. Um, so, one possible localized uh, iron salt aerosol application is over uh, open pit coal mines. As you may know, uh, coal uh, contains methane. And when you extract coal, you release methane. And uh, just to give one example, uh, in Alabama, in the United States, this uh, open pit coal mine releases up to 166,000 tons of methane every year. So we can generate uh, iron salts, aerosols, and uh, chlorine atoms to remove this methane when, uh, locally, where it is very concentrated, before it mixes and it is diluted in the global atmosphere. A second example that we can target, which is very localized, are the leaks. And uh, two, uh, five years ago, near Los Angeles, there was a gas reservoir who has a leak. Uh, and uh, in less than four months, uh, the, the, the leak released 100,000 tons of methane. So with the same technology, we can uh, try to remove the methane before it mixes uh, and it is diluted. So there are several other possible localized uh, iron salt applications. And uh, what I want to say now is that the iron salt aerosol uh, emissions will be localized. Contrary to what has been explained by uh, Jim Haywood, uh, solar radiation management has to be is consisting in injecting sulfate aerosols in the stratosphere, you will have all the stratosphere covered by uh, sulfates uh, all over the world. And uh, in this particular case, we are only uh, emitting the uh, iron salts aerosols uh, in a very localized places. So 
Some critics uh, compare the iron salts, aerosols, to ocean iron fertilization. Ocean iron fertilization was uh, done in purpose of enhancing the phytoplankton uh, growth and enhancing the marine food web uh, <clears throat> and also to try to capture some carbon. Uh, but uh, our iron salt aerosol technology uh, has other co-benefits which are, is to remove methane, to remove tropospheric ozone, and to remove balak carbon. Uh, and uh, when the iron from our iron salts, aerosols, finally reaches the Earth's surface on the continents or, or on the seas, uh, it is 1,000 times more diluted than during ocean iron fertilization experiments. Uh, I can make also uh, an analogy for gardeners. Uh, uh, if you look at irrigation, uh, what is better? Ocean iron fertilization that looks like uh, a flood followed by uh, four months of drought, or uh, iron salts aerosol, which is like a daily drip irrigation. One more point is that the iron salt aerosol cost is very low, and for the moment we have evaluated it to less than $10 per ton of equivalent carbon dioxide removed, because we don't have to build new infrastructure, and uh, it's uh, already occurring. There are many criticisms against ocean iron fertilization, and uh, there is a list there, but uh, as, I, as I have shown, uh, anthropogenic, man-made, uh, inadvertent emissions of iron salts, aerosols, already occur, and for the moment they have not shown any similar deleterious effect. The main criticism against uh, ocean iron fertilization is that there is no proof of carbon storage. And in fact, we think that there is no proof yet because the marine food web and the organic uh, carbon cycle is very complex. But please, let us test first the methane removal uh, effect and we will discuss later the carbon storage. Uh, is the iron salt aerosol method safe? Uh, <laughs> I will have a tendency to say yes, uh, because it's already existing. Uh, but uh, we are on the way to produce a full assessment of the risk and of the benefits uh, of the method, which requires, of course, evaluation of the safety and the efficiency. Uh, so for that, we need field trials and computer modeling research in order to evaluate the effect of the iron aerosols in all parts of the biosphere uh, the atmosphere, the ocean, and the, the, and the continents, and uh, uh, underwater, and also to, uh, to see the effects of iron aerosols on the atmospheric chemistry and on, in, in, on living organisms. Uh, so we have a field try proposal. Uh, we need first, of course, to get all the legal authorizations. We need funding, and uh, we plan to do uh, <clears throat> uh, field trials with marine biologists and with climate modelers uh, and evaluate the effects by satellite, satellite measurements and by uh, analytical instrumentation based on the ground or on the oceans. Uh, iron salt aerosol field trials are under discussion uh, in Australia and uh, in the Arctic Ocean thanks to our Australian colleagues uh, John McDonald and uh, Robert Tulip. So scientific cooperation proposals are welcomed and uh, as well as funding suggestions. And we really need funding uh, to do this uh, <laughs> field trials and computer modeling. So feel free to contact uh, one of my colleagues. So as conclusions, uh, I will say that iron salt, aerosols, are already occurring both by natural ways and by man-made anthropogenic ways and uh, mainly uh, by combustion sources and by the steel industry. 
the iron in natural desert dust and in iron salt aerosols fertilizes both the oceans and the continents, not only the oceans. Uh, and this is not well yet uh, taken into account by the climate models. Currently occurring inadvertent uh, anthropogenic uh, iron salt aerosol emissions have only shown cooling effects for the moment. Iron salt aerosols uh, can reduce the atmospheric levels of methane tropospheric ozone, some uh, halocarbons, uh, black carbon, which uh, it's a very important climate forcer, which reduces the albedo of the, uh, the ice, of the sea ice and of the glaciers and of the poles, and increases the heat uptake by uh, ice. Uh, and of course, iron salt aerosols increase primary productivity and uh, remove some carbon dioxide. Uh, <clears throat> Last but not least, the iron salt aerosol can help to address the methane, climb, methane time bomb risks. As has been said before, uh, the methane hydrate destabilization and melting permafrost uh, make a very big risk of rapid release of methane and vicious charcoal. Uh, and uh, thanks to the iron salt aerosol method, we can reduce this risk and address it. So, as a last sentence, iron salt aerosol is the cheapest method proposed for the moment to fight global warming, but we need funding for research uh, and to address its safety and efficiency. Many thanks. <laughs>